Ronnie. Lou. Ronnie. Lou. You want to know who pisses me off? <laughs> <laughs> Literally everybody. <laughs> yeah, but specifically germane to this particular episode. Oh, okay, all right. The lady on uh, my uh, driving directions, my maps. Oh, yes. She pisses me off. Yeah. It's like she talks to me. She's a know-it-all. You know, and then, and then when I missed a turn, <sighs> recalculating. Right. Like, you idiot. Yeah. Well, you know what? She pisses me off. And my car, I feel, is talking to me. And on this episode, 10 things your car says about you. My car's talking about me? It is! Behind your back! No, that's not right. It's next on Men Are So Smart. Hi there, welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And we're glad you're here for our episode today. We're talking about the things your car says about you. We don't mean literally. Oh. The kind of car you that's drive. That's why I have some words with my car. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and you've got a lot of them. <laughs> uh, it, it, what your car says about you based on your lifestyle. And some of these are kind of, I don't know. I, you be the judge. Here we go. Number 10, you're a soccer mom. Uh, if you own a soccer mom van, chances are you are indeed a soccer mom. Minivan, which by the way now is considered the old school soccer mom vehicle. So if you're driving one of these, you're most likely an old mom. SUV, aka the cool soccer mom yeah. car. CUV or crossover. If you drive one of these, chances are you're a mother. You're a mother. You know <laughs> mother. what? You're a mother. With an A at the end. You're a mother <laughs> who used to own a minivan, and now your kids have grown up a bit, so you don't need the extra car space, or you need it for your grandkids now. Honda Odyssey, another good one. Soccer mom, Range Rover Sport. That's for rich soccer moms. Damn, I, I'm looking for those. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Your car may also say uh -huh. whether you're a Democrat or Republican. Oh, I got to hear this one. How do it know? Yeah. It do, how do it? <laughs> A recent study uh, conducted by researchers at Stanford University revealed that your political stance can be determined by the type of car you drive. All For right. example, yeah, okay. in cities where sedans uh, outnumber pickup trucks, there is an 88% chance of, that the city will vote Democratic. Hold on. For example, sedans. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, and in cities where pickup trucks outnumber sedans, there's an 82% chance the city will vote Republican. That's pretty interesting. That seems uh, unlikely, but it's hard to say. Yeah. Uh, we show that it's possible to determine socioeconomic statistics and political preferences in the U U.S. population by combining publicly available data with machine learning methods. Interesting. Uh, the report published in the Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences. You know, another Science! Way, another, another good way to tell? No. The Hillary bumper sticker on the back of the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, number eight, you're a speed demon. A recent study, God knows we love recent ones, showed that your odds of getting a ticket are determined by the car you drive, or more appropriately stated, speed demons prefer certain types of cars. Here are the top 10 cars in descending order. Speed demons drive and the percentage of drivers getting tickets. Woo, All right, try to follow this. I don't see my car on there. It's All not right. good. Maybe I can shoot this on a screen save. We'll see. ES300, that's a Lexus. Yep. People driving this vehicle get caught speeding the most. And you know why? Because they do. <laughs> However, we're uncertain of the percentage of tickets given out. Nissan 350Z, 32.5%. Dodge Charger, my neighbor has one of those. Yep. Uh, SE or SXT, 32.1%. Volkswagen Jetta GL, 31%. Chevrolet Monte Carlo LS slash LT, 30%. 30, almost 31. Mazda Mazda 3S, 30.3. Uh, Volkswagen GTI, 30.3. Dodge Stratus XST, 30.2. Acura 3.0S, 30%. And Toyota Tacoma. Oh, I used to have one of those. 30.1%. Yeah, I never got stopped for speeding in it. You got a Tundra now, right? Yeah, I have a Tundra now, the yeah. big the big one. Uh, maybe, and it's only because somebody totaled my Tacoma for me, a guy on his phone. 
So <laughs> I know you like to get that shot in. Maybe maybe I would have had a speeding ticket had I had the truck a little longer. All right, you've made your point. <laughs> uh, this next one, your car says whether or not, or what your confidence level is. Okay. Uh, according to a Reader's Digest article. Oh, in there, so... Uh, uh, let's see. If you drive a tricked-out pickup truck, mm -hmm. you probably lack self-confidence. Ronnie. Hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> the bigger and more attention-seeking the vehicle is, the less confident its driver is likely to be. Uh, they're compensating for feeling a lack of power somewhere by making up for it in their vehicle. Hmm. Uh, speaking of compensating for a lack of something, something, the Odyssey Online says that people who drive a Ford Raptor, which I would have loved to have had, are looking to make up for the fact that I am lacking size somewhere else. Well, Ronnie, I didn't read that one. Dang. You did. Wow, well, I am a white guy, so <laughs> you have to allow for shrinkage after I get out of the water and everything. <laughs> Moving on. You're family-oriented. If you've got those stick figure family window stickers in the back glass yep. of your car, you are indeed family-oriented. Well, duh, that goes without saying, unless, of course, you bought the car off someone else <laughs> who happened to be family-oriented. <laughs> six cars and you six kids in the line and you have one but anyway according to Henny isn't that like Hennessy abbreviation Henny. those stickers are a way of establishing your place in the social hierarchy declaring your status and showing others you're superior to their families you can also be quite dangerous because they share way too much information about your family like your kids names and ages their hobbies the name of your pet Oh, passwords. Oh. That's, aha. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'm with you. Uh, this next one, yep. your car may be telling that you are a multitasker. Uh, I think I am. Uh, it's possible. If you've got tons of trash in your car, junk mail, soda cans, food wrappers, etc., you're a multitasker. I am. Although most people would probably say you're just a slob. I am. <laughs> but according to this psychologist, clutter is simply a physical manif manifestation of your mental state. The way you maintain your car inside and out gives people some insight into your personality. Uh, if it's a mess, could be sending others the message that you are a very busy person. Enough, okay. Enough said. Number four, your generation oh. says a lot about what kind of car you drive. Did you know that the type of car you could drive can also tell someone your age? And they don't even have to see you, the driver, to know, or at least make a guess. Here goes. An Audi, you're a millennial. A Ford, you're either a Gen Xer or a baby boomer. Mm -hmm. Toyota, you're most likely a Gen Xer. Honda, millennial. Chrysler, you're probably older than 65. <laughs> and I would say the same for Buick, okay? Yes. Uh, BMW, you're most likely under 30. Mercedes-Benz, you're either a Gen Xer or a baby boomer. And Lexus, you're probably older than 65. And Ronnie, um, the article does not mention, but I alluded to a comment a couple of shows back about how I, when I see all these beautiful Corvettes now, the one thing that I have in common is all the guys are over 60. Yeah. And, you know, and I understand what it is. You're, uh, you've are you reached a point in your life where you want to have the car that you always wanted to have. Yeah. I understand that. I get that. But it's just funny. You don't see a lot of younger guys driving. Them. Well, and I'll tell you, because I go to a lot of Corvette-only shows, uh -huh. and it is, it's about 85% old folks and about 15% younger guys. Mm-hmm. And the younger guys are almost always driving brand new ones. Mm -hmm. uh, the older guys are driving everything. Right. But a lot of it has to do with your insurance at oh. an old age finally gets to a point where it's affordable. I never thought of that. Uh, I had a Corvette when I was 20 years old. Uh -huh. And uh, my insurance payment was higher than my car payment. Wow. So well, you did have some tickets on your record. I had a few tickets, yeah. so okay. that that goes hand in hand. Yeah, but it is a lot of it has to go with hey, you've got more disposable income. 
hey, go out and buy a car and pay for the insurance, not, no big deal. Uh, today, we're talking about what your car says about you. Hey, this next one, this might say that you love cars. All right. Uh, these are the folks who like to drive muscle cars. They enjoy automotive history, love the mechanical aspects of cars, and are probably a mechanic. Well, at least they probably work on their own vehicle. If you own an older car, you almost are forced to. Yeah. Uh, people who drive sports cars, including small sporty sedans, uh, also fit into this category. They love driving just because their car is like a second home to them. Or it could be that these folks are trying too hard to look cool, which is sometimes the case. Yeah, i.e. huge monster trucks. <laughs> yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to a show, car show last, was it last week? Can't remember. Yes, last week. Uh, and it was a Chrysler Mopar only show. Oh, the one at Hagen Park? Yes. In Rancho Cordova, California. And I was, I, I actually was there with some friends, with another couple, and... Uh, they have a Dodge Challenger, which is very cool. It's a, which is what I want. It's an excellent car, guys. It's got a, uh, it's got the shaker hood. Oh, I love them. Uh, it's got the Scat Pack, which is a little more horsepower and what have you. So she was talking to a guy that had a kind of a special edition Dodge Charger, mm -hmm. and this guy knew way too many facts about that car. So and wasn't afraid to name every one of them. Right. So, uh, but you know what? I mean, obviously it shows he loves his car. He loves cars in general. This wasn't his first uh, Mopar product. So, yeah, I, I'm okay with it. You're practical. That's what your car says about you. If there's an affordable four-door car parked in your driveway or garage, you're likely the practical, level-headed type. Hmm, nothing in here like that. You're also the type to clip coupons. <laughs> that would imply I go to the store, and I don't do that. And make good financial decisions in general. Well, there you go. And you think about things in life, dependability, safety, gas mileage, high resale value when it comes to purchasing your car. Something else practical people drive, gray-colored cars. Hmm. It's As a color. Do. Mm -hmm, I do. Well, almost all gray. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, gray colored cars. It's a color that is obviously very neutral, color consultant and trend forecasters say. So it's really rather sober. The person who chooses it is usually very practical and pragmatic. There are people who make lists and talk things out. Mm -hmm. I do have a tendency to do that. And we've come to number one, Ronald. Okay. Number one is your car says you're selfish. Ooh, I want to hear more. Now, there's a couple things, but this first one is very true if your car has ultra bright led headlights okay you said ultra i have i have hed or led i'm sorry which is fine right but they're the ones that have a separate driver uh yeah yeah if you drive something like that then you're most likely the selfish type while these lights give you a brighter glow while using much less power and can be very helpful on dark country roads they are also a safety hazard because they blind other drivers. Uh, if you choose a car specifically for these types of headlights, what you're saying is that you, uh, your comfort is more important than the safety of others and even your own safety for that matter. The other one I'd add to this is the people that drive the diesels and they've had them modified slightly to where whenever they take off, it's a big puff of black smoke. Like a bus. Like it worse than a bus. Oh my God. And it's, I sometimes I think they can do it intentionally. I'm not that familiar with diesels, but I've seen people at stoplights like send out this big blast of black smoke and then I can see them giggling in their car, in the uh, truck. Intentionally. Right. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Well, You're we'd selfish. love to hear from you. Uh, what does your car say about you? Um, I drive a Nissan Altima. Ronnie drives a Corvette and a black Tundra. Tundra, yeah, right. Uh, what does your car say about you? I I think I fall into the practical category. Mine's a four door and it's gray, um, and it's far from being a new car. So I think I fall into the practical list. Where do you fall, Ronnie? Uh, I probably one. There should be one there that says you're spoiled. Ah, <laughs> because. 
I drive a nearly new Tundra. Well, I'm looking now. That was number 11. <laughs> Didn't oh, make the top yeah. 10. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't like driving old cars per se. I drove, trust me, my kids went to private school from kindergarten all through high school, uh -huh. and then they went to college. And until they got out of college, I drove very old, kind of, not beat up, but I drove old hoopties. Yeah. And strictly out of necessity. Yeah. All of our money was funneled to schools. Right. So right. once once I had I stopped paying for college, got myself Bam. a new truck, boom, done. Thank you so much for watching today. We appreciate your time. We know how valuable it is. You've got a million things you could be doing, but you've chosen to spend some time with uh, Ronnie and me, and we're glad that you did. Uh, if you haven't already done so, we'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. The information is below. Uh, just click the button. It's pretty easy. And you know what, Ronnie? You know what? You'll get a bell. Really? Oh, when you click the bell, that means you get notifications each time a new show comes out. And our shows are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and our Sunday morning mass is at 7 a.m. on Sunday mornings. And we hope you'll join us for that. You um, know what? In the comments, mm -hmm. why don't you put down what type of car you drive? Yeah. And what you maybe think your car says about you. Yeah, we'd love that. Uh, comment, we reply. We get them, we reply. Unlike some other shows we know of, mm. we'll just block you for whatever reason. <laughs> uh, we don't do that here. All right, we got to get out. I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. See you on the next Men Are So Smart.